How's it going, Wealth Giants? My name is Ryan and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I wanna go over how to evaluate a company like Nikola, a company that is pre-revenue. Now, if Nikola isn't your bread and butter, but you find another company that is like Nikola, that's pre-revenue, this information could help you evaluate those companies as well. So please stick around and see how I do this. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but I do recommend making it a very small portion of your portfolio if you do plan on investing in this company, because it is more of a gamble anything and you have the potential of losing all your money if they don't hit their milestones in the future but before we begin it takes me a lot of hours to put these videos together and I don't get paid to do this so if you wouldn't mind slapping that like button for the YouTube algorithm it helps me out a lot helps people like yourself find my videos here on YouTube also if you want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing and if you have any questions leave a comment down below and let's get into this video for those of you who have looked at the income statement before watching this video know that they generated some revenues last quarter. Now let me explain why they are still a pre-revenue company and why this revenue that they reported is actually irrelevant to you as an investor. In their 10Q they stated under revenue. To date we have primarily generated revenue from services related to solar installation projects that are completed in one year or less. Solar installation projects are expected to be discontinued and are not part of our primary operations. Right there, they just said that they are discontinuing their solar portion of their business, meaning that this revenue that they reported is irrelevant to us as investors who are looking towards the future growth of this company. So that is why they are still a pre-revenue company. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. There are three things that I look for in Nikola before I invest in them pre-revenue. And their CFO, Kim Brady, actually said it best in their earnings call when he said, as a pre-revenue company, the best way to monitor our progress and execution would be to hold us accountable for achieving certain milestones rather than earnings. Now, I agree with the majority of the statement. The first thing you wanna look at is their milestones. Are they reaching their milestones by the dates that they specify within their budget? In the conference call, they stated five milestones that you should keep an eye out for. Let's look at those real quick. Now on the screen, you could see the five milestones and the first four I think are good and important. You wanna keep track of those. If you wanna pause the video and read through them, go ahead and do that now. But the main one that I wanna focus on is the bottom one. Completion of phase one of our Greenfield Manufacturing Facility in Coldridge, Arizona by Q4 of 2021. This is the most important one because this is when they're gonna start generating revenue, okay? This is when I'm gonna start seeing a return on my investment. As much as it's cool to invest in a green company, I'd rather just see them making me green. See what I did there? Funny, right? Anyways, okay, so the second thing I'm gonna look for before investing in Nikola is their cash burn, okay? Now, this is where I disagree with their CFO a bit, is where he said, don't worry so much about the earnings, worry more about the milestones. Well, the earnings kind of indicates what their cash burn is, and they only have so much money on their balance sheet before they run out of cash, okay? And they are gonna be ramping up how much they spend over the next couple of quarters. So that kind of concerns me because it's a lot harder for a company that has no product to sell to build capital without selling more shares to the public, which kind of dilutes the investor's shares. So that kind of is a little concerning. Plus Plus, how hard will it be for them to get the loans from banks and all that other stuff? You know, there's a lot of loops that they got to go through. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't do it, but it is kind of concerning. How much money do they have on the balance sheet? And then what is their cash burn projection for the rest of the year? Let's go ahead and look at that. Approximately on their balance sheet, they have 698 million minus 8.9 million of restricted cash and their projected cash burn estimated R&D for 2020 is in the range of 190 to 200 million and estimated SGNA for 2020 is in the range of 175 to 185 million. Okay, so let's just say they're going to spend about 400 million by the end of the year and they have 690 on the balance sheet. So pretty much they will have by the end of the year 290 million left, which remember they're not going to have a factory until Q4 of 2021. So that means they have 290 million dollars left on the balance sheet to get them there. Uh, yeah, they're going to have to build more capital, which means they're probably going to sell more shares to the public or they're going to have to take out a loan, which they're gonna probably have high interest rates and you know, there's a lot of loopholes that they have to go through, which is more complicated of an investment. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't do it, but that is really concerning to me. 
Now let's go to the third evaluation of the Nikola to determine how much it's going to be worth in the future. Okay, this is very important because you don't want to buy into a company now and find out it doesn't grow later. Okay, so how much is it going to be worth? And the only way to do this really is to compare it to the industry that it's niching down in. Nikola right now is niching down into the semi truck manufacturing industry. Don't get it confused with the semi truck industry, the trucking industry, because that's a very, like, that's a $700 billion industry. The semi truck manufacturing industry is worth more around 11.9 billion, according to what I found on Google. So, not so much. And that's not the best case scenario for Nikola because right now Nikola is trading at around a $14 billion market cap, which means it would be overvalued. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. Nikola is branching out into hydrogen fuel. They are branching out into recreational vehicles and they are also doing the Nikola Badger and they have potential to do cars and SUVs and things like that. So let's compare it to another competitor that's a little bit higher up on the scale, but not too high. Let's go General Motors. General Motors is trading at around a $38.24 billion market cap, which is a little bit more than a double up, which isn't too bad, okay? It's a bullish, bearish case scenario. The reason why I say bullish is because it's got a ways to go before it reaches General Motors. Bearish because, you know, I'm just comparing it to General Motors. It's kind of at the lower end, you know, it's not a Toyota or a Tesla or anything like that. Well, let's not go too far up. Let's not go towards Tesla's level, but let's go ahead and go to Toyota's level. Say it eventually one day makes it to Toyota's market cap. Toyota's currently time of recording trading at around $179.68 billion market cap right now. So that's around a 13X of your money if it makes it to that point. So you have to go about determining, well, do I think it's gonna get to General Motors level? Do I think it's gonna get to Ford's level? Do I think it's gonna get to Toyota, Honda, or even Tesla's level in the future? You have to be realistic about this. Remember, this is your investment. You have to be realistic to yourself whether or not you should invest in this company thinking it's gonna make it to a specific market cap in the future. Awesome, so if you're still with me in this video and you're finding value, please consider slapping the crap out of that like button and also subscribing and hitting the notification bell if you find that you wanna see more videos like this. What I wanna do now is go over why I'm not invested in this company and when I plan on investing in this company and they are actually related to the three things that I just mentioned. Let's go ahead and jump into them. The first one is the milestone, okay? The milestone of creating that manufacturing facility in Arizona, I think is the most important part about their company and probably the one thing that's really holding the entire investing in this company back from me. And that is, I gotta be able to see this product in function, okay? They are doing something very complex with hydrogen fuels, okay? I know quite a bit about physics, I know quite a bit about chemistry, and so therefore, I, I know that it's really complex and it's not as easy as they're making it sound, and especially if they're not actually letting people actually see the data, and I, I understand why they're not, but at the same time, it, it would be nice to be able to have reassurance that their product actually works the way they say it does. The next thing is, is their cash burn, okay? They will have about $290 billion at the end of this year to get them to the fourth quarter of next year to start generating revenue. That's not including profitability. So that worries me quite a bit and I wanna actually see them actually build capital. The next thing, the third thing is trying to figure out how much this company will be worth in the future. Right now it's really unclear because they're really focusing in the semi-truck industry. I don't feel like that's the best industry to focus and niche down in. As we saw, the, the industry is only worth around 11.9 billion. Now they're obviously doing other things, but if that's their main niche product, they're way overvalued as of right now. They could end up doing more in the hydrogen and the wreck vehicles, trucks, cars, SUVs, and things like that. That would be awesome because that makes them so much more valuable and makes them more a General Motors slash Toyota value and possibly even could get them to the to the Tesla value as well. But until I actually see them actually trying to ramp up how what their products will be, see them build up capital and get that manufacturing facility built and get some products out on the street, I, I, I can't invest in them as of right now. But other than that, I love their business model. I think that it's very ingenuity. Is that a word? I hope it is. But 
anyways that is the main thing i got to see before i invest in them but anyways that's what i got for you guys today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider slapping the crap out of that like button also if you want to see more videos like this please consider hitting that subscribe button over to my right it's an ugly mug looks just like this one i'll see you guys in the next video have a good one peace